I'm delighted to say that I'm joined now by human rights campaigner Peter Tatchell. Uh, hello. Greetings. Um, uh, my first question is, human rights has quite a sort of a bad reputation in some parts of the media, especially and among some people in the public. Um, they see it as giving rights to people who uh, want to a, a, a take away our rights, want to uh, attack certain sections of society. Uh, how do you respond to criticisms and, and the bad PR that human rights has? The fact that some people try and misrepresent the human rights agenda is no reason to throw out the baby with the bathwater. You know, there may be some misapplications or misinterpretation of, hum- of human rights law. Um, some bad things may be done or attempt to be done in the name of human rights law, but overwhelmingly that law is the most important protection of our individual liberties and freedoms. The Human Rights Act is one of the most important pieces of legislation in this country. It gives the private citizen protection against an overpowering state. It gives us protection against the excesses of government. Well, it's interesting that you say that. And and do you think with the Human Rights Act and uh, uh, civil partnerships and anti-discrimination laws, do you think that the battle in the UK for um, for LGBT LGBT rights has been uh, has been won under the Labour government? Nearly all the discriminatory homophobic laws that have existed in many cases for decades, if not centuries, have been abolished and repealed in the last decade. That's a stupendous achievement. The LGBT human rights movement is one of the most successful of all time. To get rid of that legislation in the space of a decade is a phenomenal achievement. But we ain't quite yet at full equality. Although civil partnerships are an improvement on the total non-recognition of same-sex relationships. Civil partnerships are not equality. You know, civil partnerships are a separate legal framework. How would we feel if the government told the black community, I'm sorry, you can't get married, but we will give you civil partnerships? I think most people, black and white, would be utterly outraged at that suggestion. Yet that's what's happened with civil partnerships. There's one law for heterosexuals, civil marriage, and another law for same-sex partners, civil partnerships. Two wrongs don't make a right. What we have is a system of sexual apartheid, and that's not democratic, it's not fair, and it's definitely not equal. And do you think that's been been uh, set up in that way to appease certain uh, religious communities in this country who feel that marriage is the union between a man and a woman and that's all, all that marriage is and that's all it can be? No doubt about it. The government opted for civil partnerships out of sheer cowardice. It didn't have the guts to take on the religious right and push for same-sex civil marriage. We're talking about civil marriage here. That's marriage in a registry office. Not marriage in a church or a mosque or a synagogue. Marriage in a registry office. If the government really cared about gay rights, it would have legislated same-sex civil marriage. Civil partnerships, although they're an improvement, they are a cop-out. Okay, uh, just off the top of my head, a few things I, I can remember you doing. Uh, handcuffing yourself to Robert Mugabe, uh, getting beaten up by neo-Nazis in Russia, uh, but recently jumping in front of President Musharraf's uh, car as he was driving through London. Do you ever um, think to yourself uh, that you're in a really dangerous situation? Do you ever think, well, maybe it's not worth doing these things where you could get injured or arrested? I sort of feel I've used up most of my nine lives, <laughs> but... I'm still determined to carry on because I believe in the principle of universal human rights. And I wouldn't say that what I do is particularly important or significant, but it does help raise awareness. You know, when myself and my outraged colleagues ambush President Mugabe's motorcade in London in 1999 to highlight his human rights abuses, that was at a time when most people in Britain and around the world had no idea about the scale of murder and torture that was happening in Zimbabwe. By what we did, it certainly did create greater public awareness. 
It shamed and embarrassed Mugabe. He was furious, which was always a good thing. Um, so in that sense, it was a very positive achievement. Um, it also provoked a huge sense of, I don't know, relief in Zimbabwe because people at last saw that the outside world was watching and did care what was happening. So it was a great morale booster for the people of Zimbabwe. And, and that kind of reaction is what keeps you going in spite of all the dangers? Ab- absolutely. And, you know, after I ambushed President Musharraf's limousine uh, in, in London at the end of January, um, I got lots of emails from people who were saying all the same, same thing. You've highlighted an issue we had no idea about. What I was doing, I was supporting the democratic struggle in Pakistan, but particularly opposing Pakistan's criminal occupation of Baluchistan. Baluchistan was an independent nation in 1947. The following year, it was invaded and occupied and annexed by Pakistan and has been held under military occupation ever since. I support the people there. Their plight has been virtually ignored by the whole world, even the United Nations, because of geopolitical politics. You know, the big Western powers, China, India, it's all, Baluchistan all Baluch is caught up in this big global power struggle. Well, I'm saying, forget the power politics. Look at the human rights of the people there who are under military occupation, whose leaders have been murdered by Musharraf and his predecessors. Stand up for their rights. And, and do his predecessors include the Benazir Bhutto camp and, and the people who are pro-democracy? Absolutely. I mean, Benazir's father was one of the absolute tyrants of Balochistan. You know, he was a you know, Pakistani chauvinist. Um, you know, Pakistan was a colony, but now it's become a colonizer in Balochistan. And also there's, there's similar oppression going on in Northwest Frontier against the Pashtun peoples, also in Sindh against the Sindhi people. Um, you know, Pakistan is a prison house of oppressed nations. And all I'm saying is, you know, whether it be Musharraf or Bhutto or anyone else, the people of that country have a right to determine their own future and to live under a democratic state where the human rights of all citizens are respected.